Locked away the Gragas here for Spooks, and you have a little bit of experience convincing Spooks of the fact that Gragas is a good jungler. Yeah, Gragas a very good jungler on the current patch. Spooks has picked that up recently and looks extremely comfortable. I thought the three bands that the Chiefs were going to see the entirety of this after the LeBlanc game was going to be Gragas, Hecarim, and LeBlanc, if you were, on the red side. But it does look like they're happy to give the Gragas over instead choosing to ban away the Nautilus. And Rosie looked good on that champion. Yeah, on the side of Detonation Focus Me, they've picked up Shyvana as well as Corky. You would assume that Syros in the mid lane picking that one up, oh, but we'll have to thank see. thank goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Swiffer, most definitely a notable Ari player. We saw it left open. We saw his LeBlanc, how powerful that was. He's better on Ari. Yeah, exactly right. This is the thing that really was amusing coming into this one. As they flashed a Trindamir as well, do not be mistaken, Swiper's favorite champion is Trindamir. Yep. Will be willing to take that into the top lane. Although it looks like they're happy to run some tanks. They pick up Morgana as support and the Maokai in the top. Yeah, well, at least Swiffer knows that Ari is available and in his champion roster. So he's remembered it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully we may see that one come through as Detonation Focus Me. Making some quick choices. Yeah, they've hovered a Siva as well as a Rek'Sai. Oh man, the mid corky yet again. Yeah, so a mid corky coming through. This is once again a double AD carry composition. They've got the huge tanky threat in the top lane, yeah. so they've got a good front line as well. And the thing is, we mentioned Rek'Sai in three-man groups. The knock-up is so hard to dive. Once again, they can push out waves with Utapon and Bonzen set up sieges around the map, rotate around extremely quickly with the Siva. I like where Detonation Focus Me's composition's going. A little bit more to their comforts once again. And once again, Chiefs look like they're just playing standard. Yeah, Chiefs more than happy. But th these are comfort picks here. Rosie, a fantastic Morgana player. Of course, Swiper played close to 60% of his OPL games on the Maokai, and Spooks has looked very comfortable on the Gragas just recently. So picking Comfort, something that we said would be a good idea, and it seems like both of these teams have been taking that one through. Of course, Swiffer with some experience against Corky Mid, but I believe it was a couple of years ago against Heaven's Curse from the Oceanic region. Yeah, it certainly was. So we see now Chiefs rounding out their lineup with Illusion as well as an Orianna coming through here. Good ball carry system coming through. Two very solid oh, carries yeah. and some protection for Radier. So we'll have to see whether they have enough damage to take down Bonzen. Bonzen has a real potential here to run over the top of the Chiefs lineup. I think they do lack a little bit of the damage coming through, but Bonzen currently a sole tank, and there's not many tanky supports left. Something like a Leona might work. Alistair is another one that you can go for, but they're nearly running a solo tank lineup here unless Esatore can really get going. Yeah, and I, mean, I guess Asatore is going to be able to pick up the Cinder Hulk if he wants to. As Kazu thinking about a Nami is going to lock that one in. So that is about as far from a tank as you can get without being Sona. Yeah, it certainly is. But what they do have once again with Jana being banned is they have this three-man unit that is extremely hard to dive. You can't dive Nami. You can't dive Rek'Sai. There's just True. too many layering of CCs to come through. And who runs with Bonzen? There is no option here to shut down the Shyvana. He's going to be absolutely massive wherever he goes. Maokai's not going to be able to force him off farm. You can almost guarantee that. And the Chiefs do not have a split pushing threat. No. I mean, Swiffer generally is the team's split pusher, but on Orianna, they need all that utility and potential team fights. Yeah, exactly right. And even Orianna not going to be able to solo out the Shyvana once the second, third item comes through. So we'll have to see how this one works out for the Chiefs. I think that just from the pick ban phase, they have a better team fight. But the composition that Detonation Focus Me is running is extremely hard to deal with. They have the wave clear coming through from Corky as well as Siva. Even deals with the Barrened Up yeah. minion pretty well because of the magic damage is not really there. It's just going to be a lot of AD coming through. And we'll have to see how it works out on the rifts. You feel that either team, if they get an early advantage, might be able to run away with this one. Yeah, well, it's... Seems to be the aim of the game here is going to be those early advantages, making sure that they can get in amongst it. But you, were you mentioned wave clear, and if you want 280 carries in your lineup and you want wave clear, these are the perfect champions for that. You've got the boomerang and the phosphorus bomb, and that's all you need. Yeah, exactly right. You send one boomerang across, all of a sudden, Corky can just clear up every piece of yeah. CS. Even if you're down, you have relatively good anti-siege. You can't dive, as we mentioned, unless you go absolutely massive on Maokai. I think that, yeah, Detonation Focus Me, I like their comp. I like what it brings. 
Well, we'll see whether it works out, ladies and gentlemen. But you have to think that Bonzen going to have a lot of attention there on the top side of the map because they have to keep that Shivana down. We are going to start, ladies and gentlemen, with another pause. But we'll talk through it. It'll be fine. Don't you worry. And we'll be into that game as soon as possible. Yeah, exactly right. You mentioned the Camp Bonzen style. This is something that they ran, especially against carry top laners. And Bonzen appears to be that way on the Shivana. Yeah. So they're more than happy to send Spooks up there every single time and we'll take a look at their standings while we're waiting bangkok titans now on top four and one they can finish the day five and one if they are able to beat out the chiefs yeah and that is on i believe our second last or final game second of the game. day second last is going to be the fourth game of the day ince as well with a couple more to play we'll see how they finish off of course only one more to play that's not a couple. I just can't count. And I think I'll put it over to you, this one. Yeah, all right, cool. So the big ones here coming in is Bangkok Titans, Hard Random Secured. And now it's out of the next four teams. Ince, Chiefs, Besiktas, and Detonation Focus Me to make a push there. As you can see, if Chiefs win two games now, they would have beaten Bangkok Titans. So they'll have their head-to-head -head advantage. So whilst all the teams will be 4-2, there will be some cr crazy weird three-way tiebreak. There yeah. will be another team that also follows them in. So this is the schedule we got. Chiefs versus Detonation focus me now. Then Ince take on KLG. You would expect from what we just saw that Ince would be in the driver's seat for that game. Yep. But we've definitely This is a KLG with nothing things. to lose. Yeah, though. exactly right. So that would also put Ince onto 4-2. Then the next really important game, especially if you're an Oceanic viewer, is the game uh, four, four, four of the day, which is Bangkok Titans versus Chiefs. Chiefs must win that one to qualify. And then Detonation Focus Me, they'll round that out with Besiktas. Yeah, and we'll see whether Detonation Focus Me can continue potential momentum if this game goes well. But they've had a we've got nothing to lose style and it's worked out for them so far. And we'll see whether they can take it through to this game and through to the final. Yeah, exactly right. And I like what you're mentioning, the nothing to lose. KLG, Detonation Focus Me, they're in that similar situation yeah. right now where all you can do is win. You're relying on other yeah. people to lose if you are Detonation Focus Me or rather, I guess, some very big upsets to go through. So if all they do is win, they have a very good chance of making it because they'll win some of their head-to-head. -head. So all you can do is keep chugging along, keep winning. Same if you're the Chiefs. You have to win both. That secures you your spot. Then you don't have to worry about anything. KLG, they're trying to battle for a little bit of Lat uh, Latin America pride right now. So yeah. all they can do is really throw caution to the wind, play their brand of League of Legends and try and take it to ints as well. So across the board, we have some teams that can now shake off some, I guess, early nerves from day one and two. It's the last day of the group stage and just go out there and play some good aggressive League of Legends. Yeah, and they've got to make sure that they, they're playing exactly their game as well. We've seen a lot of these teams, the reason that they fall apart is because they're dictated to in a way that they're not used to. They don't know how to play a lot of these separate styles because this is a clash of so many regions. Yeah, exactly right. You come in and also you've got to remember these are the top teams from every region. So yeah. a lot of the teams, especially like the likes of Chiefs, the likes of Detonation Focus Me, they're not used to losing games. They're not used to yeah. teams really taking it to them. These guys have been on top for a pretty long time. Chiefs lost some majors last year, but they were still probably undisputably the best team in the Oceanic region. LJL, relatively new, but Detonation Focus Me seems to hold a similar flair over there going through. So you have to think that these guys... They're not used to falling behind. They're not used to having to battle these games out. So every game that they do it, it really is a big test and we're finding out something new. Yeah, and the Chiefs actually had a next to flawless series there in the OPL. They lo they dropped one game that in the entire season. They were 14,000 gold ahead in, by the way. So the game they lost, yeah. they were 14,000 gold and six turrets up. Yeah, so a game that they probably shouldn't have lost is what Spawn meant there. But we are on to the rift, ladies and gentlemen. The Chiefs from Oceania taking on Detonation Focus Me from Japan. We'll see who comes out on, on top because both of these teams, these, this game is so, so important. Yeah, it certainly is. And you see the early group up from the Chiefs. Yesterday, they were beaten by a good lane swap. So straight away, they're moving in there with the Morgana, trying to secure a level one advantage, get some deep wards down. Nice ward come out of Radiant, make sure they don't get collapsed on. And they're trying to find this Shivana early. Yeah, they possibly could too as they're moving towards that top side. Bonzen already up there. As the Chiefs just getting down as much deep vision as they possibly can. They will get the ward over the wall. Bonzen going to spot that one out. And Radiant and Swiffer are going to head back to base. So Chiefs successful 
movement around the map, picks themselves up some vision. But probably a better ward actually coming through from Kazu in that bottom lane. It's going to spot out between the two turrets. Oh, it has been pinged though. Yeah, so they know it's there, so they're going to wait. So they will secure the 1v1 lanes you would hope coming through as Kazu as well as Utapon. They've stayed on the bottom side of the map. Rosie and Radia are down there as well. Please, one of you change your name so there's not so many R's in your bottom lane. But they will be able to get the 2v2 standard lanes secured for both teams. You're talking about R's in the bottom lane when the whole rest of the team starts with S. That's fine. I can deal with those guys. I can't. Swiper and Swiffer? You try that in a team fight. Ridiculous. That's why you're the play by play. As they start up, the Gromp, you see the Astator, he was happy to smite that one because it gives him the Gromp the aura. And then he can just go solo out his blue pretty quickly and he has some sustain because he's uh, Rek'Sai, who is a female, but Astatore is a male coming through there. That's Nicely like done. Well gendered. Yep. Um, so <laughs> they'll be able to get the early level too if they're able to push out Utapon and Kazu. On, in the bottom lane, Rosie and Radia, they didn't pick up anything. So unless they can really shove out this wave, they're going to be in a little bit of early trouble. Yeah, Piercing Light is going to be helpful there. And of course, having that puddle level one for Rosie is going to be helpful as well. But of course, level two going to be achieved right now, in fact, from our Detonation Focus Me bottom lane. Kazu so deep already. Yeah, Dark Binding actually going to find the Nami here as Rosie skilling that one up first. But this bottom lane from the Chiefs is going to be zoned early on. Utapongo, though, pushing relentlessly. Yeah, so Utapon shoving that one in. They won't lose out on any CS, though, because they weren't able to control the wave. Instead, it was a full shove. So Radius should be able to pick up the majority of these minions. All, all of them so far. Rosie is he going to get it? Them. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. Rosie got one of them. Still, the team managed horses. to get all of the CS. No, spawn. Not impressed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosie is known as to, as being a relatively carry-focused bottom is. lane player. No Zyra, thank goodness, coming through here. What do you mean, thank goodness? That's one of his best champions. Gragas finishes up his jungle a little bit quicker than Astatore, who, of course, didn't have the help early on. Actually had to burn Smite on a camp. He didn't finish up for that level two, so you expect that to come through. But Utapon and Kazu, they're just repetitively shoving out this lane on Sivanami. That being said, Radia able to stay up in farm. He's actually ahead just because of better skill last hitting under this turret, you have to think, with this Radia, with this Lucian. <laughs> yeah, sorry. definitely. His last hitting was perfect, Atlas. See? We'll give it to That's you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Spawn. You give me that cheek with the Rosie taking one CS. He managed hey, you just to get said all he the got rest everything. of them. He did. You were lying. <laughs> You can't lie to our viewers, Atlas. I talk about Radia as having a pocket Rosie that <laughs> takes everything else for him. He's holding on to that one. I like that. That's a good way to look at it. Also, yeah. CS distribution, something of the past, but double bruiser laid, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we may see Blitzstar again, ladies and gentlemen. One can only hope. Tarek Garen, bring it back. <laughs> okay, let's get back into serious casting mode, though, because Swiffer going to get a ward down here in the mid lane. And how does Oriana face up against Corky? Corky with a lot of poke past level 6, but so far in the laning phase, Command Protect generally Ooh, going Spooks to be strong. has got a gank in this bottom lane. Can get in. We'll see whether he can make it work. Needs to go for Kazu, you think? Yeah, there's the flash after the body slam as well. Kazu's going to get exploded. First blood goes to Spooks and the Gragas already rolling. Yeah, and Flash Body Slam is an absolute mammoth gas closer early on. Not to mention the fact it's a knock-up, which is just so hard to get away from. You can follow up CC with it, and you see already the Chiefs having a much better time in this game. You were talking about the mid lane matchup. It is going to be a little bit hard for Oriana early on, more so than anything. Her wave clear will start to take over. But if anyone can go with an AD carry in terms of auto attack trades, it is Ori with that passive we like to talk about so much. Yeah. Adding a little bit more punch in there as Astatore looking for his first gank top is spotted out by a ward. Yeah, and we haven't spoken too much about this 1v1 matchup here on the top side as Bonzen's taken a bit of harass damage from Swiper with, of course, the sustain advantage up there. You can see able to offer back a lot of damage here with that arcane smash as well. Asatori just deciding that, you know, top lane's not where he wants to be, but Gragas, he's very, very Gragas close. Gragas knows now as well because the wolf spirit just chased him out. No, Surely I he that must have seen that. Yeah, no, but it chased Gragas. So ah, yes. If you see a spirit all of a sudden start chasing you in your jungle, Pretty good chance <laughs> that, that someone, someone just smited it. it. Yeah, okay, good point, good point. Would have assumed that if you're walking around in the enemy's jungle and there's a wolf spirit there, didn't really figure 
on the fact that it's his jungle. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So coming through there, you see Unipon, even after the first blood went over, it did go to the Gragas player. He wasn't shoved off too much CS as the wave was pushing in. So they're completely even. No backs have gone through yet. So Radiant won't be able to pick up any advantage from that. As Swiffer in the mid lane, he's six CS behind. That's about a creep wave. It's exactly a creep wave if you don't count the cannon one. So all of a sudden, Zeros, he's starting to get a little bit of an early advantage coming through. But it has been Spooks that got the early first blood in. So a 500 gold advantage over to the Chiefs. And yeah, we'll see whether Spooks can carry that through as well. Really affect these lanes. Swiffer is able to get the Command Protectors. Asatori looking for something. They get the flashes. Kazu moving towards mid. And Swiffer says, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah, exactly right. Just wants to go back. Probably going to pick up an early Morella Nomicon for himself. Just to be able to sustain in this lane. Spooks Ooh, no. will pick up some farm. Actually, going for the Athene's uh, Unholy Grail. Even without some of the magic damage coming through there. Yeah, and of course, Corky going to be doing the majority of his burst damage in Magic with the Rockets and, of course, the Phosphorus Bomb, but it is an interesting decision. Yeah, it certainly is, and we'll have to see how it works out in the long run. Of course, much better teamfight item as they tag up Kazu again. You'd have a little bit late on that spell shield. Radiant-esque, some would say. <laughs> That's rude. Oh, his spell shields they, day they one were, were bad. not they were, great. they were pretty terrible. You are correct. But, you'd have go... Just going to make him feel a little bit better about himself there on the bottom side, missing that piercing light, which is a difficult spell to spell shield anyway. Swiper does a beautiful job with that arcane smash and the sapling to clear out the back wave. And all of a sudden, they've timed the blue buff transfer perfectly with the first dragon. They sent three members up there. There was also a back that came through from Rosie. Radiant hasn't shopped, so they're not in really much danger of getting this one stolen away. And it looks like Detonation Focus Me will pick this one up for free. Yeah, Chief's just saying, okay, we don't have enough people. We're not going to be able to... I don't think they know. Well, the bottom lane's gone. Yeah, so they will probably know now, but it's also a good time to recall for the bottom lane. Whoa, Bonds and uses the ultimate there on the top side, but Swiper... We've spoken about this guy's Maokai before. I mean, he does play aggressively, but Shivana unable to stay in this lane. Yeah, actually didn't push hard enough Swiper there, so it might freeze a little bit off the side of the lane because that... Can't, uh, that creep will hold them up just a tiny bit, then all stack up, push into his lane. Um, he's playing well, but now that the skirmisher stave has been finished up with that with cinder, hole, cinder hole, wow. do not expect him to get much more bullying. In fact, Shivana is relatively well known for just ignoring you as a laner and farming creeps instead of you. You get a lot of CS when you're against a Shivana unless you get some incidental damage down on you. So Swiper will definitely farm up. As you can see, he's looking a little bit nervous in the bottom left of the screen, biting his lip, not looking too happy there for some reason. But he has got an early advantage in being able to at least get to the point where he's going to be mid-game relevant. Yeah, certainly looking serious. That being said, Swiffer now with a level advantage slightly here and has evened up the farm almost completely. Yeah, certainly has. His Orianna is really good in the mid-game, so he'll be able to farm up an absolute storm. Expect him to maybe even start getting ahead of Cyrus, who grabs the extra CS there, so he'll reclaim a one CS lead. Oh, look, we'll keep you updated, ladies and gentlemen, on the one or two CS gap here in the mid lane that may occur based on last hitting. Oh, that dissonance was huge as Swiffer locks down another one. Oh, and a second. Beautiful work here in this mid lane, but misses the final melee And all minion. of a sudden, Spooks, who we normally call Swiffer's shadow, isn't in the mid lane, and they're sending Kazu as well as Asator back here. He's held it off the turret really importantly, and wow, he's going aggressive. Yeah, there's the shockwave for Swiffer with no flash, unable to do anything, and the ebb and flow adding insult to injury. Detonation focused me with three men in the mid. They lock down the next kill of the game. Yeah, and they're looking to hard shove the mid lane turret as well. Spooks needed to get there earlier as he throws out the ultimate to just keep the turret safe. So you got to think that's another win for Detonation Focus Me as they take a blue buff away from Orianna and give a kill over to the Corky. Yeah, really terrifying stuff coming through as... Wow, and I have to mention something. Yeah. That is a full AP Corky this time around. He's not going for the Trinity Force. He's picking up a Morellonomicon. That is very strange. Seros did, in fact, go for that Trinity Force into Leandris, I believe, in the in the last game that they played. But All right, so I'm going to correct you there. That's not strange. That is outright a bad build as Utapon in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Radio uses the Reliance of Suit to escape there. Does blow the heal as Utapongo actually running away with the ult. Tidal Wave to come down. Nice black shield as Utapong. He's going to get taken down. The 2v2 victory Swipe comes through for the well. Chiefs. And Maokai coming through the back. Flash into the Twisted Advance. Gets the knock up as well as there's the Ventral Maelstrom. 
Spooks comes through, could pick up the kill if he wants, but Swiper's gonna net it, and Spooks happy to give that one over to his solo laner, and Radius getting rolling, the tree's getting rolling as well. Detonation Focus Me, they might be able to take down the first turret, though. Yeah, they're looking to get in on the first major objective of the game after that dragon also fell in their favor, but two kills going across to the Chiefs will definitely start their members rolling at least, get some excitement going in the team. It really is only Swiffer who's currently falling a little bit far behind and the Chiefs looking to answer in the bottom lane. Yeah, Thieves on Holy Grail is almost completed here for Swiffer though and of course has had a lot of focus by the Detonation Focus Me lineup and you have to think that did allow oh, them to get a lot. nearly got it. Yeah. They're going for maybe a dive in the mid lane though. Swiffer needs to be very careful. I believe that Swiffer probably, you know, the once bitten, twice shy factor going to be helping him out here as Detonation Focus Me have been focusing Swiffer more than anything else. He is hanging very, very so deep under that turret. three members once again in here. They'll be able to take out the turret because no collapse coming through from the Chiefs. And they just completely don't. Wow. Beautiful shockwave gets Seros out of the um, turret range, but oh, okay. Not going to quite get there. Flash. Nice flash. Yeah, had to burn flash. Really good ultimate coming through from Spooks. Now they've sent Swiper in here as well. Utapon, in the meanwhile, got some free time in the bottom lane. Radio was sitting on about 2,000 gold. Had to go back. He's nearly finished up that Infinity Edge. But now, Detonation Focus Me with superior objective control, you have to say, at this part of the game, has been able to pick up a gold lead. They've got a dragon as well. And they might even be able to push in on this mid lane turret. Yeah, they are going to head back to base at the moment, of course. Kazu hanging around just to get some vision down. Swiper heading back to base as well as he shoves the wave in. See, it's very even between these top laners. Bonzo not going for any aggressive choices. His second item just wants that giant spell for some extra tankers. Yeah, so able to get in there. Kazu actually shoved that lane for his team. I don't know why he did it exactly. It started. It probably won't mean anything, but... Just because you use CC on the creeps, it means they can't auto-attack. Obviously, yours can auto-attack. If you do it to a back lane, it will start shoving Yeah, against you. So, like, it's obviously going to mean nothing because they're two wave clear champions, but just something to point out to the viewers at home. That's why you generally don't use CC on creep lines because it pushes against you. Yep, Rosie, hanging around here. Thank you for the, the, the sweet creep wave I like wave creep wave. I know you do. I learned how to freeze a wave because of your information, and I learned what a slow push was a little while back. Good news. Thank you very much, Spawn. <laughs> in the meantime, though, Seros does have a few friends here in the Chiefs who are hanging around, but he is going to make his way back towards the mid. Rosie now finally giving Swiffer a little bit of attention here in the mid lane because there have been a lot Kaz of... Kaz has been here for a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sort of forgotten which AD carry he's supporting, I believe. Yeah, as well. Sam going... Uh, Spook's going in. <laughs> yeah. As <laughs> Torre is in a little bit of trouble here, taking a lot of damage. Swiper looking for something. Twisted Advance wasn't there. Righteous Glory was used as Spooks. Flashes over. Picks it up with the final auto attack. Swiffer and Rosie, they're closing in. Dissonance going to speed up the tree. Just waits to get that down. And Rosie actually blows the ultimate, I believe, as well. Bonson trying to fight back. This is a massively tanky dragon. But Swiffer locks down his first kill. Yeah, so able to get it done there. That was a two for nothing, but they pick up another objective. So whilst the Chiefs are chasing kills and getting a gold lead, the map is firmly in control of Detonation Focus Me now collapsing on Radiant. Yeah, Radiant might be in trouble here on the bottom side of the map. That turret, of course, has fallen down, so no protection to be had there. But the dragon, it's now live. The Chiefs moving over towards it as Spooks not quite at the health that he'd otherwise like. Void Rush going to get Astatore down here they to this dragon. They have available as well. This is probably Detonation Focus Me's objective. I don't know how they t uh, fight this one. Yeah, Spooks might be looking for some sort of body slam base steal away as the ward in that brush does give away Rosie going for a potential engage and no soul shackles there are a few ultimates that are on cooldown here as they can engage here and they probably will get the team fight they want they're looking for something as Yudapongo blows the ultimate here on the hunt Rosie's being focused as Swiper looking for something Asatori just gets exploded and Rosie flashes out of that fight Radiant he gets bubble but not a lot of attention on him while that goes through and the Chiefs, they pick up a quick kill. Yeah, so they're able to get a kill at 6-1 right now. They're dominating in that. They're just not able to grab any objectives. Detonation Focus Me have had them on lockdown. Can they defend the mid lane turret now? It looks like they can. They're backing away. Chiefs, whilst winning the little skirmishes, they're ganking a lot better. Detonation Focus Me has just got a better eye for objectives.
Yeah, and it does mean that this gold lead nowhere near what it should be at this stage. Six and one makes you feel like the Chiefs are going to be in the control, but Dead Nation Focus Me, two to zero in the Dragons. They're behind by what? 900 gold? That is nothing here because they've taken down the whole outer ring of turrets. The whole, the whole outer ring of turrets. As Dead Nation Focus Me, they, they now have control of this map, like you mentioned before, and Asteroid, he'll be able to take down a whole lot of the Chief's jungle and he'll have so many ways to get out. Yeah, well, I still don't know if they can invade the jungle without good vision because they are actually still weaker. So it's not like that they can use their map control more. It's just that at this point, the Chiefs have to travel much further out of base that the waves can start shoving. It actually what? opens up Shyvana more than anyone as we're seeing the components of everything yeah. for Seros. He wants so many options. Yuta Pongo. Looking to try and get out of this one. Does flash out of the way. Swiper doesn't get the memo. He wants to dive this one. Bonzen's coming through as well. Swiper taking a whole lot of auto attacks. But Raid is here. Bonzen could be in trouble as Yuta Pongo might take a bit of damage there. Bonzen does end up using the ultimate in order to escape this one. But the Chiefs, what they want is the turret. There is a lot of standing gold on the map for the Oceanic side. And they're going to take it down if they can. Bubble doesn't quite find anyone as the boomerang's going to be used to clear out this minion wave. And Detonation Focus Me demonstrating the fact that they have wave clear for days. Yeah, they certainly do. The rest of their members rotate up so they're able to get a little bit more control over that top side of the map. Swiffle will head back mid lane to try and shove that one in. They need to be careful they don't get caught in rotation here, the Chiefs. Actually being fairly lazy with some ward uh, placement on the way back through. So we'll see how that one walks out. But in the end, everyone just ships in the night atlas. Nothing much happening, but it's right back down to 100 gold only. Detonation Focus Me, they're securing some of the farm now left standing on the map, and the Chief's not able to get any advantage. No, Swiper down here on the bottom side, going to be able to clear out this wave pretty easily, you have to think as well. You have to think this is now turning into a frustrating game for the Chiefs. They feel like they're beating Detonation Focus Me to these fights. They're getting the tiny team fight advantages, but by losing out on all the objectives, they're just not where they want to be in the game. And this Shivana, all the while, is getting bigger and bigger. 20 CS ahead is not going to be unbearable in the late game. Bonzen really is rolling, and that's probably the only member that the Chiefs could afford to not get ahead. Yeah, well, this is the thing. They have taken down the Shivana once, but you're going to need to be able to deal with her in the later stages of this game, and the Chiefs probably wanted far more of a lead at this stage. Spook's going to spide away the red buff, fix that one up for himself. The Seros going to be hard shoving here in the mid lane. Might be in trouble here as Rosie's looking around for something, but... Yeah, I want to know whether Swiffer goes the Luden's Echo here, or whether he just goes Death Cap into Leandris. I think that actually if they go Leandris, he has a better chance of dealing with the Shyvana, who's going to be health stacking. There will, of course, be two Cinder Hulks coming through as True. well. Some of the flat penetration early really does help out Oriana's kit. So we'll have to see whether he does make the adaptation that we've been seeing or just goes a very standard build with all the AP in there. Yeah, and of course, the Rabidans plus the Athenes on Holy Grail, always a fantastic power spike just to have as much shield control and everything like that as well. Of course, Oriana able to use that AP both offensively and defensively, meaning that, you know, magic penetration not quite as important for that champion, but you're exactly right. They need someone who, who can build something to deal with this Shivana. Yeah, exactly right. They just need a way to shred the tanks because Radier, he's not going to be able to do it by himself. They have some percentage health damage coming through on Spooks with the Gragas, but that's probably not going to get it done in the late game either. Once again, same thing on Maokai, very similar situation with the W, but he doesn't do ridiculous amounts of damage, especially with the Righteous Glory build. So you can see Bonzen, he's having a free time. There's no way that he can force the Maokai off the turret, but it's going to get to the point in the game that we've seen with Shyvanas and Hecarims alike. Yeah, they just don't care. They just tank it up, get a few pot shops through there, able to take it down. And now Swiper, he's getting even more focus on him in this bottom lane. Yeah, there are four members here on the bottom side of the map. Swiper spots them out with a decent ward and does have a fair amount of wave clear, as you can see. Righteous Glory completed, does have the Ninja Tabi as well, looking to get even tankier as this game goes oh, wow. on. Wow, and this is very Utapon out of Raid here. He was the one setting up the bush camp this time. Thinks he's firmly in control of the lane as Utapon going for his double Doran special, trying to get some more life steal in there and also just some more dueling potential, but he was the one that actually left the lane this time around. Yeah, he doesn't have the control that he's used to here. Of course, very aggressive on that. 
on any AD carry that he's playing. Yeah. I mean, Period. my goodness. Yeah. Ever, just <laughs> in general. 30 CS down, though, is this Sivir, and doesn't have the kills at all. 0, 1, and 0 in comparison to the 1, 0, 1, 3 here for Radia. Kazu Kazu. trying to hold up the wave here. That's very aggressive coming through, but it will be cleared out by Siros, who's picked up the Leandri's Torment now. Also has a Blasting one. Still the components of <laughs> the Morella Nomicon coming yeah, through. It's like he's trying to build a, you know, Wooglet's Witch Cap from the Twisted Tree Line. I don't even know what that is, Atlas. I'm not going to pretend I do. It's just a tree line, man. Yep. I know what that is. Yeah, I just good. don't know what a Wooglet's Witch Cap is. It's like a, it's like a Zonia. I just know the name of the item and what it builds out of. It's basically Zonya's and Death Cap mixed together. Okay, no worries. Thank you for that information that will take up precious space in my brain. As we see, <laughs> Detonation Focus Me. I've got plenty going more. Going towards another dragon. This time, they don't have the teleport available on Shyvana. So once again, they use Astatore on Rek'Sai to be able to pressure that lane. Shyvana, as you said, just picked that one up. But the Chief's doing a pretty good job of clearing out the tunnels coming through here, so they might actually have an advantage here and might be able to get their first dragon of the game. Yeah, Spooks actually had the opportunity to try and take down that tunnel, oh, that but poke decides damage not is to. So rough coming through from Zero. So they need to be able to catch someone because you can see that's only two missiles coming through. They weren't even the big one, and Rosie already at half health. Yeah, and Radio actually taking one of those as well. As speaking of missiles, the Prey Seeker going to come down. Swipe having to deal with that as well. But Radio is so strong at this point in the game. I mean, he's got the. Uh, yeah, this is a Phantom, Phantom Dancer, Dancer in comparison to the Brawler's Glove yeah. on the side of Yudapongo. But the poke just too much coming through here. You see, they're in complete control of this siege around the Dragon area. They're sending three members back now, and straight away, Detonation Focus Me. They start it up. Yeah, they've got a ward over the side here as well. You can see Spooks Chiefs able to see it this dragon. Chiefs again. This is a third dragon in the game. Once again, Chiefs, they feel like they're stronger. They just can't fight. And they're unable to make the decisive moves in, these ga in this game. And that's exactly what you have to be doing against a, a comp that's going to poke you out. Exactly right. They've now got the Warmogs finished on Shivana. She is absolutely massive. As far as two items go, effective health pool. That is huge coming through. Yeah, you they're get, the best. Yeah. Outright the best. She's absolute monster. Not even a half dragon anymore. We'll give her the full dragon award coming through. But Oh, never go full dragon. <laughs> We're seeing the Chiefs. They're struggling in the decisive play. They've got the gold advantage, but they definitely don't have any objective advantage. And you think, with how Detonation Focus Mia playing, 12 minutes time. Oh, Kazu. Yeah, there's the Dark Binding. Spooks actually gets the Body Slam as well. The Hula Hoop goes around him, but that's only because Kazu died a little bit too quickly. Yeah, exactly right. Death Cat was picked up. Actually misplaced his damage there, Swiffer. Didn't need all of the extra coming through from the ultimate. And now they might be able to siege out mid, although three members already rotating across. Crit Wave decimated by this Corky, who just does ridiculous poke damage. And they're not going to be able to get it done. Yeah, not going to be able to take that one down. And I don't blame Swiffer because even when you're playing Orianna, it's really hard to understand quite how much more powerful you get when you pick up that Rabidon's Death Cap as well as the Athenes. It's a crazy power boost. So they might get the first real meaningful objective here. They are able to pick up Corky's Blue. That means that he won't be able to spam out the missiles as much as possible. You see, he's actually running relatively oom, um, so they may be able to get the mid lane turret just off a good invade coming through in the jungle. Yeah, nicely done. But the Chiefs, they sort of don't really care about many of the objectives around this map. They've taken one turret. That was almost incidental because Radio wanted to get to probably the creep wave behind it. They really need to start prioritizing taking down these structures. Yeah, they certainly do, especially with a late game carry like a Shivana on the other team going to come up absolutely massive in the late game. So. I agree, they need to be able to get to a point where they can take down structures and maybe in the next five, 10 minutes. Otherwise, it's gonna start creeping up on them. The fifth dragon, it always sneaks up on you. You think the dragon, especially with how early Detonation Focus Me took it, remember they took it whilst the Chiefs were grabbing their second blue. Yeah. So it was about the 10 minute mark coming through there and they're already on three. Mustn't have been, uh, yeah. So they're on track for, as we said, like the 30, five-minute dragon, the uh, fifth dragon that will come through and just put them in great stats. 
Yeah, and the thing is, at that stage, they can continue to get fifth dragons as well. Void stuff has been completed by Seros, as you point out. He's been sitting on the components of that Morellonomicon for a long time. And it's really weird because they're very gold inefficient components when they're combined once one of the most gold efficient items in the game. So the ability to sit on them is a little bit strange coming through from Seros. It isn't the most, I guess, gold... It's not the most gold thirsty build coming through. It's the Chiefs now forcing in the mid lane. They can't dive as we... Oh, oh wow. Saros gets exploded. Spooks picks up a really nice ultimate there to gather himself. Most of the wave clear and definitely all the wave clear in the lane as there's a split push coming through from the Sivir. Spooks trying to get some work done. Bonzing going to teleport in here. Oh, beautiful shockwave. Kazu gets exploded by the piercing light and the Chiefs. They're finally making the decisive plays, but... Yuta Pongo, he might be able to take down an inhibitor turret. No, he certainly won't. Swife is on his way there. They will back away. They'll trade the two for one turret. As Yuta Pong needs to be very careful here. He might give up an inhibitor and his life instead. Yeah, and who has sticking power more than a Malka? I don't know who. Does he have the flash though? He does have it available, but no twisted advance. But look, the inhibitor turret's falling down. Mid lane inhibitor gonna follow as the Chiefs. They hit the go button in about 26 minutes. Yeah, exactly right. They're Whoa, now fighting Bonson again. Whoa, though, ulting into this fight. The huge dragon in amongst them, but he's just getting torn apart. Not enough effective statistics. The culling tearing apart the Corky as well as Yuta Pongo. His back was stopped for so incredibly long, and he's now on the top side of the map. Yeah, so he will be able to get back, but they save the turret. They break the base. All of a sudden, the side waves have so much effective gold, the Chiefs have finally managed to get the real meaningful objectives they were looking for. Oh, yeah. And it came off a huge Gragas play from Spooks, 4-0 and 2. He has been the spark that the Chiefs have been waiting for. And he's got Radier in there. He's got Swiffer in there. He's been the playmaker that the whole team has been able to gather around this game. He was the hero that they were looking for. Most definitely spawn. Void staff going to be completed outright, I believe, here for Swiffer. The try. The trinity, the trifecta of uh, mid lane the items there. The three items, probably much better. I believe trifecta has something to do with how horses come in a race. So it has nothing to do with the amount of items. But that is three brilliant ones coming through for Swiffer, irrespective of whether I'm correct or not. It certainly Saros is. Has still hasn't got the boots well. too. So Swiffer, he did this on his LeBlanc as well. Obviously he doesn't prioritize boots too. Movement is actually a very good stat on Orianna, so... We've seen Alacrity Boots being picked up very, very yeah, early. Yeah, Alacrity Aether Wisp is like a very common build right now. To very just common build with Godby in the yep, LPL. To just get yourself around the map a little bit quicker, also be able to get more effective damage through, as they might actually look to trade Baron for Dragon here. Swiper gets the read, able to put down a ward. Now maybe the Collapse, but Utapon once again, he seems to have won... I'm going to yep. throw out a name. Lots of people know him. His name's Double Lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I heard of that guy. Heard yeah, of that guy. Seems to have a very similar playstyle to Season 2, <laughs> Double Lift. Yeah, my team, they've stopped being able to win team fights. What do I do? Never be with them. Yeah, exactly right. Soak as much farm as you can in the bottom lane until you can 1v5. Man, Seros does not want to finish that Morellonomicon. He got the Home Guard enchant. Instead of it, he got all sorts of different things. Maybe he doesn't know they build into an item. One of them separately. And now ah. I just can't figure it out. That's not the case. Just very yeah, strange. I'm not sure whether anyone has ever decided to build a Midnight Idol. Baron coming through Whoa. teleport <laughs> so soon that he's going to get collapsed on. Yeah, hey guys, we've got a ward here. Swiper though, that ultimate not quite tanking up enough, but there's the culling tearing apart. Detonation focus beam. Swiper just explodes Kazu as Swiper comes in as well. Does get a lot of work down, but done before falling is Yudapongo going to flash away. Nice oh. boomerang. Does a fair bit of damage, but... They lose Swiper for two. Yeah, so able to pick up two. They stop the Baron. More importantly, they pick up the Dragon. So they're able to get a lot of work done around the map again. Minion Waves pushing in their favor. One thing we have criticized the Chiefs for is not having great side wave control. So they're going to have to go sort that out. And you would think maybe wow. the next objective will be that top lane. As you see, the ridiculous damage Radier is currently doing. Yeah, Radier's solution has always been incredibly strong, but sort of fell out of his kid of champions moving forward, but this season picked it back up again, and man, he looks good. Yeah, he kind of fell out of everyone's kit, and then well, all that's of a sudden the thing, people yeah. were like, wow, he still does exactly what he used to do, just like 10 <laughs> less face damage. Why did we never like keep playing Yeah, why guy? did we stop playing him? <laughs>
Yeah. I believe he played it in more than 50% of his games in 2014. So definitely played a whole lot of Lucian. The beginning of the season, in fact, it was almost the sole champion he played. Yeah, so Detonation focused me. They're now able to get around the Baron area, and they've got some good wards out there. So Detonation Focus Me, they understand what their team comp needs to do. They've fallen a little bit behind. Can't win the team fights anymore, so they've started the split push. Anymore? Have they won one before? Yeah, they were in a much better position to be able to win a team fight earlier when they were equal in gold. So True. now they're sending Bonzen into the bottom lane to continue to push out. Once again, still very few people can go with the Shivana. But the Chiefs, they don't really care because they've got an open inhibitor in the mid lane. They can just start a fight. Yeah, they don't need to siege. There's no turret to worry about. This inhibitor really going to open up the map for the Chiefs. And with five members here, teleport's available from Bonzen, but it's going to take a while for him to get in there. He is going to use it. The flank is going to be coming in as he launches his way into the backside. Radiant manages to dash out of the way. Nice tidal wave. Going to lock up the Chiefs just a little bit as Astoroi going to... Tank up that culling. Detonation Focus Me, though. They are backing off. Swiper engaging on top of the Dragon, who's down to quite a small health bar here as well. Wow. The Shockwave on Seros as well. He can't do anything. And the Explosive Cast locks up Astorore. He's using that as a pick tool, is Spooks. And he's doing so beautifully, netting them the inhibitor. The Chiefs, they can go get a Baron. They can do whatever they like. And the Chiefs... Once again through Spooks in a good barrel, zoning out, but Swift is Shockwave, two priority targets. He kept it on Swiper for a long time, put it on the other side of the inhibitor just for zoning purposes, and they've put another person. Yeah, Radia, oh my goodness. Swiffer and Radia's damage is silly, and Yudapongo was there for a second, and then he's dead. Yeah, they need to be careful. This Baron's still very risky. Syros is available, and he does very good poke damage, not to mention the fact that Rek'Sai ultimate is up. I think they need to pull off this one and overcommit coming through from the Chiefs. Yeah, the command attack is going to get that ball into position there they as well. They actually might have taken it up poke. in response. Yudapon only 20 seconds away. No, they will all just peel away. Bonzin will go get the massive wave top. He is now like 70 CS ahead Free of Swiper. No. He is absolutely huge. So big. And he, he doesn't have any damage items, of course, but we saw he tanked up so much in that last team fight. But Detonation focused me. They didn't follow up with their Shivana engage at all. Yeah, they don't really have much follow up to come through, to be honest, Atlas. They need to poke out a lot more with Zero. That's why Trinity Force is kind of a better option as a first item, because it gives you some more. He finished the Morellonomicon, though. Power. He has finished up the Morellonomicon, but the full AP Corky just isn't doing the same thing as what the hybrid Corky was doing in their victory. Yeah, like auto attacks. This guy, none of them whatsoever. Maybe he goes for the Lich Bane. I hope so. Gives a whole different meaning to the Phosphorus Bomb <laughs> auto attack proc. Yeah, that's a Phosphorus Bomb ridiculous proc <laughs> coming through there. We'll see whether he builds up a death cap as well. That would be silly damage to come through from that particular combo. Radius Radius. still not going for a defensive item, by the way. He's picked He's up got a, a Bloodthirster. Yeah, it's true. It's pseudo defensive coming through there, of course, with the shield, but not much armor finished up, even though he is going towards that last Whisper. Yeah, Swiffer as well. Full damage here so far. Might be building towards that uh, Zonya's Hourglass, although I really hope it is going to be that Luton's Echo here for the Oriana. Bottom lane finally in the Chiefs' favor. They've managed to get their side waves firmly under control. They will probably be able to pick up a Baron off this if they move very quickly, because that is a huge creep wave. Yeah, there's still a lot of vision around it for Detonation Focus Me. Astorari going to be easily able to finish off this creep wave underneath the turret knocking on the door, but that's the jungler a, long, jungler a long way away. He does have a few tunnels prepared, so that Void Rush is going to be helpful as Spooks. He's over the wall. Bonzen in through the backside, though, as Detonation Focus Me do manage to stop the Chiefs from taking down this Baron. But Yuta Pongo again caught out of position, exploded by a barrel. And man, we have seen this jungle Gragas from multiple players this tournament go completely ballistic. And this is why I thought we weren't going to see it again. Spooks obviously very comfortable on it. There's some very good late game uh, junglers and Gragas being one of them is just a huge threat. Oh, Dark Binding lands on Asteroid here as well. Flashes out of the way of that shockwave means that he can't flash over the wall here. The Baron 
Down to 2,000 health. Are they going to be out of Smiter's way? Oh my goodness, no! It is not going to be the steal as Bonson. He's going to fall out for it. Swiffer picks up a kill as well. That was way too close, Chiefs. A bit of sloppy play, but they do manage to turn it around. Yeah, so they're able to pick it up against a Shivana with Smite as well as a Rek'Sai with Smite. That's the strongest Smite on the map, though. Bonson had the biggest Smite The there. only person that didn't Smite Atlas was the Gragas. And in the end, it went over to the Valkyrie. So you said it was too close. It was just somewhere between ridiculous and I don't know how the heck they got it. Yeah, between those two statuses yeah. that are pretty normal. Exactly right. But in the end, the Chiefs, they do manage to do what they were expected to do there. Of course, maybe not necessarily as cleanly as they would have liked, but the inhibitor turret going to fall down. Zeros! Oh my goodness, Spooks' ultimates have been fantastic. Yuta Pongo getting exploded. Radio going down low though, forced to use that flak, but man, that red buff doing some work. And Kazu, this has been a very, very melty mermaid lady. Yeah, it certainly has been, and they're moving it even further. Shockwave. Oh, the shockwave on the last two members. Detonation focused me. Not a lot left in the tank as the quadra kill comes through from Radio. The hard carry, Lucian. 9 0 and 5. 5-0 and 11. The Chiefs' scoreline's looking fantastic. It was a more difficult early game than they otherwise would have liked, but still finish up with a 13,000 gold lead. And our Oceanic side now make it 3-2. and two. Yeah, so they're looking much better to be able to make that playoff push one more game. And you see, much happier. <laughs> the big yeah. hugs coming through between Spooks and Swiper. And... You know, Swiper always with a grin on his face, but he's grinning a little bit more than normal here. And the, the Chiefs definitely looking happy after that one. Yeah, they certainly are. So they dropped two games. One on day one, one on day two, the only one. But they're able to pick up the first win of the day versus Detonation Focus Me, who once again played a good brand of League of Legends. They were yeah. able to crush down the early structures. They were able to take the first couple of dragons. In the end, they just couldn't team fight with the composition.